It's my feel good breakfast show. Thank you so much, Graham. Yes, we are talking about a very serious topic this morning. Uh, earlier on, we showed you goals, uh, uh, or rather a program called Goals with Dignity, where it showed us how many young girls are not able to go to school due to their menstrual cycles, and they have to stay out of school for up to two months. Here to touch on this matter even more is Dr. Eve, and she's going to be uh, taking us through this process and why we should be worried as South Africans. Dr. Eve, it's so good to have you here. Nice. So this is, a, this is a very hectic situation. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we know that it's a very crazy time in a young girl's life, her yeah. menstrual cycle, um, kind of, uh, you know, dealing with it for the first time. What does the family say? What does the community say? Uh, we saw young girls who have to stay out of school for up to two months. What, what's the situation with that? You know, it's not really two months. What eventually happens is these girls drop out of school completely. Wow. So it has an enormous economic impact on yeah. our country, and in, in fact throughout Africa, that they are not provided with the basic things such as sanitary towels to be able to manage their menstruation. Yeah. And the, the hassle of it and the difficulty of it gets them eventually after a few months to like just say, this is just too much for me, yeah. I'm just leaving school completely. So it's, it's a very significant problem. Um, I'm shocked that this is what we're experiencing in the 21st century, yeah. and we've seen yeah. so many different programs where they're saying, um, help us buy bulk sanitary you know, materials mm. and towels for mm. these young girls to mm. distribute it to areas where they cannot really afford it. Mm. How does one deal with this in the 21st century, like I said, that we really shouldn't be having this problem? Yeah, there are different devices that are available that are usable all the time. So one has to look for alternatives and be pretty creative, which industries are doing. There is a, there is a lens focused on this problem yeah. now that it's become so obvious from an economic point of view of what's happening to them. I mean, that's just like from an economic point of view, but let's just consider the, the actual young girl and the shame that she's going through. Yeah. I was just reading a story last night about somebody actually in Italy talking about her growing up. So this isn't just specific to our country, we, it's specific to women who are not informed about their menstruation and so with it becomes a huge amount of shame and humiliation and ignorance that's attached to it. Yeah. And with that there isn't enough hygiene, there isn't enough discussion around vaginal health, around menstrual health and so girls go into the silent place and if they don't have an older sister or a mother who will discuss it with them, where are they getting this information? We know it's provided in some form in schools yeah. where there is, it's part of sexuality education but it's always kind of associated with giggling. And then is there, which is always something I contend around, is there actual practical things that are given to girls yeah. to teach them about the alternatives? Because we know one size doesn't fit all. Exactly. Some girls are going to want a sanitary towel, some girls are going to want tampons. It depends on their lifestyle as well. And then many, the majority of the women in our country, have to contend with things like newspapers. Yeah. And just the sheer embarrassment wow. of it, of how do we deal with this? You mentioned a word, um, being well informed. I yeah. think it's such a loaded topic, this one. Yeah. Um, when a young girl is not informed about the whole menstrual cycle, and I yeah. think that young people are becoming sexualized at a younger age mm -hmm. with things that they see on TV and mm -hmm. the internet, do you think um, kids are becoming highly sexualized at a younger age? Is that the case? Well, let's start with what's happening from puberty. Yeah. Girls are becoming, going into puberty at a way earlier age, from between the ages of 8 and 12. Boys are between the ages of 9 and 14. And their pubertal years usually take up to three years. So it's very difficult as a mother to have a child who from 8 years old starts developing breasts and mm. starts developing pubic hair. And you know the next phase, because yeah. those are the three phases of puberty. It's, it's breasts and then pubic hair and then your menstrual cycle. So suddenly the mother has to deal with a child who's 8 or 9 and bleeding, and so mothers have to really get comfortable with their own menstruation and with the getting comfortable talking to their children. And of course what I like is that it's put into the context of sexuality and sexual health. You can't just focus on menstruation. You know, if you think about it, what are the young girls' messages that they get? It's like, okay, this is what menstruation is. You bleed every month. There isn't even a context of why you bleed every month. And you can fall pregnant, so be careful of boys. That's usually the story that young girls get, which is, you know, completely wrong and actually quite terrifying. It's like, what do you mean be scared of boys? What has this got to do with it? And why do I bleed? And where do I bleed from? So these are important informational bits that are needed to be given either through the school or through parents and preferably both. Wow, we're going to continue this, co this conversation with Dr. Eve. We're talking about uh, menstrual cycles and puberty and everything that a parent should know. And if you are a parent and you have questions for Dr. Eve, you can give us a call on 083-913-3728. This is a very, very important topic. We'll see you right back after the break.